I want you guys to help me welcome Maggie to the stage as she's going to share the testimony of her brother who was miraculously healed as well. So I want you guys to open up your hearts and get ready to receive what God has done in Maggie's family's life. So if you want to just come a little bit closer, Maggie, can you tell us how long ago and what happened exactly to your brother um, that made you guys to understand that he had been diagnosed with this coronavirus? So it was about a month ago, um, he, it was almost like, it was just like from one day to the next, I literally spoke to him the day before, or saw him the day before, and then um, the next day, towards the afternoon, uh, my brother's like a really strong, like, husky guy, like he, he, I don't, when I look at him, I don't see weakness, he's just strong, and um so his fiance uh, called us all, and she was uh, pretty terrified and said that, you know, my brother was very weak. Um, he couldn't even, they had just moved into an apartment, and they were trying to uh, bring a TV upstairs, and he couldn't even get up the stairs. And um, so then he just, like, just started deteriorating his, his strength. He was weak. He could barely breathe. And so I told her, you know, I work in the medical field. So I was like, don't even risk anything. Get him straight to the hospital. So they took him to the hospital. And um, initially they didn't, they didn't really do anything. They just told him to go home and, and quarantine. And um, uh, he didn't get any better. He started getting worse. His, he just couldn't breathe. He was constantly coughing. It was a very dry cough. And so um, I was like, he can't breathe, take him back. Mm -hmm. And so she took him back and um, they tested him and he ended up testing positive. Um, because, you know, he's a healthier, younger, stronger. They told him, you know, gave him meds and t told him to go home. But, you know, we were constantly, immediately, because there's so many unknowns with, with this, um, my immediate reaction was, was fear. Mm -hmm fear, anxiety, um, being so far away, uh, it was just immediate. I, I cried and I just really, I was scared. And um, I just started praying and I was like, no, you can't, the fear is a liar. You can't be scared. So immediately um, I reached out to my home group. Um, to my niece, and I was like, because my brother didn't really want it to be blown up, so um, I reached out to, you know, close people, and I was like, please, please, please pray. Um, we're terrified. He does not look, he was pale. He couldn't eat. Like I said, he couldn't breathe. We'd talk to him. We'd FaceTime with him, and um, he'd just be constantly coughing. We even have a picture, if you can place it up on the screen so everybody can see what Maggie's brother had looked like during some of the FaceTime calls that they were having. You could just see that he was very distressed and laying in bed and very uncomfortable. So can you just tell us a little bit more about um, that time? So, um, you know, once I just kind of like woke up and I was like, no, we can't be afraid. Um, I just started praying like literally God would wake me up at three o'clock in the morning and I'd just be on my knees praying and and um my niece would you know was checking on us and saying you know everybody's praying the pastors are praying home group is praying everybody's praying and um like I said I just kept in contact with my brother two or three times a day and like you could slowly see the progression that he was he was getting better I mean there was a moment where it was really, really, really scary because, like I said, he could not breathe. And it's, if you could just have seen him, it was, it was bad. And, you know, me and my family, we, we struggled with it because he's one of the strongest people in our family. And so just seeing him like that was pretty scary. But I was like, no, we need to trust God. He's going to take care of him. He's going to take care of us. He's going to be okay. So we just, like I said, we just stayed strong in our faith, in our prayer. And about a week, wasn't even two weeks, about a week later, um, we FaceTimed with him. And he had a smile on his face. And he was like, look what I can do. And he just, 
and he took a deep breath and there was like no coughing, no struggle. And I was like, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You are so good. So Come on, let's put our hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, this is so incredibly powerful, and many people can be very skeptic and say, well, the virus just was passing through. But Maggie, as she's explaining, was uh, even mentioned how it was one of the worst cases. The, but he was not privileged enough to be in the hospital because he was considered young and a healthy and abled person. But it, as Maggie was describing, and, and Maggie and I are in the same home group together, there was moments of just complete scary moments and so to hear the way that from one day literally to the next day was a complete turnaround and how the power of prayer is is amazing and God can do anything so tell us Maggie how your brother is today and oh he's back to his normal self he's uh such a jokester and and outspoken and um just a social butterfly and so this has been really hard for him being quarantined um but yeah he's back to his normal happy self he has a big old smile on his face and we're talking and so yeah he's just back to his normal self and it's just we're so grateful to God because he took care of not just him but you know our family my mom she wanted to run to him because you know he was far away from everybody but he just gave us a peace because that's what I just kept really praying for is peace because there's so much fear surrounding this. And um, so I just kept praying, like, God, give us peace. Give us peace. Give us your peace. And, um, yeah, we, we made it through. And, and yeah. So, Maggie, tell us, what is your advice to people who are watching right now and maybe their family members are also uh, diagnosed with the coronavirus and are living in that state of fear, thinking what's going to happen from one moment to the next? How can you encourage their faith right now? Just trust God. Trust God and, and talk to him. Pray to him. Just like if he was your best friend, just get on your knees and just pray. Talk to him and trust that he is going to take care of you.